we'll add one to the Raph Olympics. Good question. I like the way you're theorizing. Oh, don't encourage me. Hey, you geeks. I've been building this theory for over a year. Ever since I happened to read Oathbringer and the Inferno in the same week, as you do. Though, I did not get enough content to work with until Rhythm of War. And then last month, Sando answered my question in a Q&A. Bless the man. To be fair to Sando, I asked my question as opaquely as possible in the hopes it would get answered. So I don't know if what he thinks I'm theorizing is actually what I'm theorizing. Either way, now I'm confident that Dalinar is. <laughs> And here's why. Dalinar has made choices that put him in the company of men I'm fairly certain are already in hell. These cracks in his character will give way to the void, causing all of Roshar to quake with resulting aftershocks that will reverberate into the back five. Spoilers for the Stormlight Archive through Rhythm of War, excluding Donshard. Cracks. Dalinar has just made a deal with the devil. I want one other small thing. I want you, Dalinar. You will give your soul to me. You, Dalinar, will join the Fused. You will become immortal and will personally serve me. The boy said, my name's Johnny and it might be a sin, but I'll take your bet you're going to regret because I'm the best as ever been. So, why do I think Dalinar is not going to win the fiddle competition? Because Dalinar seems, in part, inspired by Pope Boniface VIII. As a Catholic, I noticed that Dalinar's powers of binding things and gods sounded familiar. Yours is the power Ashar once held, binder of gods. Yours is the power of connection, of joining men and worlds, minds and souls. Your surges are the greatest of all, though they will be impotent if you seek to wield them for mere battle. It's similar to the power Jesus in the Bible gave Peter to hold, and by my tradition, his successors. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose in earth will be loosed in heaven. Not to mention, at this point in Oathbringer, Dalinar was considering being High King of Urethiru, much like Peter Pevensey is High King of Narnia. And Peter means rock. Also, Peter was a fisherman, and Oathbringer looks like a fishhook. I don't think this was a Maui reference, though Maui is also the rock. First, we get my hook. Then save the world. Since my mind can run off the rails, sometimes, I held off assuming. Not to mention, modern fantasy is not just about Christianity. There's a lot of Shinto spirituality in the Stormlight Archive as well. As for Western influence, Sando has said that Dalinar is named after an LDS church leader, the same one he named his son after. Lots of denominations read the Bible. There was no when. Then Dalinar burned the rift. We will make a pyre of this city, and there shall be no weeping for its passing, for none will remain to weep. I saw the fires of hell, particularly the Eighth Circle, where, probably, Guido de Montefeltro burns for advising Pope Boniface VIII to burn the city of Penestrino. And Dalinar, like Pope Boniface, burned the city. It follows that Dalinar, like Pope Boniface, is damned, probably. Boniface, above and beyond burning a city of innocence, which is bad, misused his popely powers, which is very bad. Boniface manipulated Guido. Your heart must not mistrust. I now absolve you in advance. Blech. Teach me to batter Penestrino to the ground. You surely know that I possess the power to lock and unlock heaven, 
For the keys my predecessor did not prize are two. That's not how the force works. To Dante's original audience, this would be a big red flag. This is evident from the text since Guido is burning for the sin Boniface claimed he could absolve before it happened. Meanwhile, Boniface deep fries for eternity for making this heretical claim for personal gain. But I won't get too technical since bartering a sacrament probably won't be Dalinar's undoing. His soul has other cracks, and Sanderson fortunately draws from other sources. But will Dalinar somehow misuse his bondsmith power, or has he already done so? When faced with the choice of his town or his soul, Jean Valjean chose his soul. If I speak, they are condemned. If I stay silent... I am dead. Betting your soul might just be a sin. Another angle is that Dalinar has been fulfilling the mentor role for Kaladin, going so far as accepting Kaladin's fourth ideal, which was the most beautiful thing I've read in years. Kaladin has turned a corner, which means he won't need a mentor anymore. See where this is going? Probably, you fools. <laughs> Interestingly, in the Divine Comedy, the Pilgrim's first mentor, Virgil, accompanies him to the top of Mount Purgatory, which symbolizes the highest good conceivable by human reason alone and ideally can be reached by all people. Once at the top, a procession descends from heaven and blows Virgil back to hell. Well, limbo, which is the nice part of hell, where he belongs. Virgil had deprived us of himself. Virgil, most sweetest father. Virgil, to whom I gave myself for my salvation. This is remarkable because purgatory, unlike Miaido, a comparable land of the dead from Japanese culture, purgatory is a guaranteed ticket to heaven, eventually. Dante gets really worked up about Virgil vanishing off the top, and by sheer coincidence, the duel of the champions will be happening on the roof of Eurythero. Though if there's one thing I'm absolutely certain of in this video, is that the duel of the champions will not look like Dante's celestial procession. In short, Dalinar has a choice, the beyond or damnation, and I'm betting he's destined for... Damnation? E Eternal damnation. Influx of void light. If Dalinar, binder of gods, men, and spren, chooses poorly, then Roshar is stuffed on so many levels. Dalinar's deal assumes that Upon his death during the duel, he will give his soul to Odium to become the newest fused in the Cosmere. A fused is a type of cognitive shadow, as explained by Zyle, who is also a cognitive shadow. Every part of my soul has been replaced with something new. When I died, I was drenched in power. If you let a man die with too invested a soul, or invest him right as he's dying, he'll leave behind a shadow. Though Zyle says it can happen as a person is dying, we saw that Eshenai's soul could be infused in the cognitive realm with enough of honor's investiture for one last flight across Roshar. I can show you the world. Although Eshenai wore a regal form with minimal access to void light, she had just sworn the first ideal and held Stormlight within her when she died. The Stormfather connected to that to give her more time. If Dalinar dies and his spirit goes to the cognitive realm, he will be bound to that realm by honor's power. So what happens when his soul is infused with odiums? 
or more to the point of this video, what happens to his Nihil bond? What about his Spren, the Stormfather? The largest remnant of Honor Roshar has left when Kaladin drew on a small amount of Void Light in his final fight with the Pursuer, it hurt Syl, making her forget his fourth ideal. Would the mere act of Dalinar becoming a fused kill the Stormfather? Only one honor friend seems worried about this possibility. The Stormfather is all we have left of old Tanavast. Do you know what would happen, Prince Adolin, if the Stormfather were to be killed? I can only imagine the catastrophe that awaits us when your father kills his spren. Now that Amuna brings it up, I'm certainly worried. Damn. Damn, damn. Hypothetically, with Warlight and the appropriate rhythm, there is a way to invest the cognitive shadow with two types of godlight. Yet, I don't think Odium would allow it. It's not in accord with the words or spirit of his agreement. As Rezodium said, a man cannot serve two gods at once, Dalinar. It follows that Dalinar becoming a fused would break his bond to the Stormfather, making the Stormfather a dead eye. I haven't seen anyone else in the fandom worry about this because it is well established that the Radiant Spren bond ends at the moment of death. But this is fantasy, and death has a lot of wiggle room. He doesn't seem entirely dead. Oh, he's not quite alive either. There is a word of Brandon on this. Uh, me, my skirt, and I says radiance stay invested after death in the cognitive realm. Does this mean that the Nahel bond lasts until they go beyond, or does the bond end when the body dies? Um, so, uh, Raffo, um... We'll, we'll, we'll add one to the RAF Olympics. Good question. I like the way you're theorizing. Regardless of what he meant by that, I'm now convinced that Dalinar's damnation will kill the Stormfather, making all of Roshar rumble. Quick. It is clearly established that the duel is in 10 days. We have a contest of champions on the 10th of next month at the 10th hour. So soon, the month ends tomorrow, but there is one grammatically infuriating sentence which implies that the war won't end until 10 days after the duel. The terms will enforce a treaty in 10 days following the contest. The hostilities will continue until that day, and so we must remain vigilant. I expect the enemy to make a play to capture what he can before the treaty finalizes borders. I perhaps made a miscalculation there. Curse you, ambiguously placed modifier! That's a technicality. I am Vulcan, sir. We embrace technicality. Whether the treaty takes effect in 10 days or 10 hours following the duel, I predict the Stormfather going Deadeye, either at the novel's midpoint or the darkest hour. I'm not certain that Dalinar will outright lose the duel. C.S. Lewis is known for having a victory in the duel of champions be the worst possible outcome for the victor. Now's not the time for chivalry, Peter! But Sando, thankfully, is not Lewis. However Dalinar gets damned and kills the Stormfather, that event would send our heroes scrambling. It would first give Shulan and Adolin's quest to free Ba Ada Mishram some oomph. Why do you want the gemstone that holds Ba Ada Mishram, Mraze? What are you intending to do with it? What power do the Ghostblood seek with a thing that can bind the minds of an entire people? For one, it puts the Ghostbloods in an awkward position. If the power they seek to exploit has dried up, then will they be willing to let the unmade go to restock the well? Or would they be willing to turn to an alternative power source like Void Light, which apparently can be created by a singer in regal form singing? Once the War for the Stars begins, I'm certain that Odium would be happy to hand over 
enough regals to form a mutually beneficial agreement with the ghost bloods. For two, the recreance was a tragedy, but Roshar had 3,000 years to rebound. Reviving the Dead Eyes is important, but not pressing. Kill the Stormfather, make it impracticable for Radiant Powers to work, then give Odium's armies any amount of time to conquer whatever is not forbidden by the treaty, and the need becomes quite dire. Also, the last words Adolin ever spoke to Dalinar were in anger. Maybe, incredible though it may seem, there are more than two choices in life. I'm not you, but that doesn't mean I'm Taravangian. Maybe I'm my own brand of wrong. Wouldn't that just stink if that was his last conversation with his father? Ever! Finally, we know that Book 5 will be Zeth's book. His problem has been an inability to make moral decisions on his own. First, as a truthless, he followed the moral code of whoever held a stone. Then, for a short time, he followed Nail. Now, as a third ideal skybreaker, he has sworn to follow Dalinar's moral code. What if Dalinar dies? I will seek another ideal, I suppose. I had not considered it. Fortunately, for whatever few strands of sanity remain in that bald head of his, Skybreaker Oaths build up the moral compass of the Radiant, but do not build upon each other in the same way Windrunner ideals do. If you progress as a Skybreaker, you will need to become the law. To reach your ultimate potential, you must know the truth yourself, rather than relying on the crutch presented by the third ideal. Ideally, <laughs> swearing a fourth or even fifth ideal should free Zeth from following Dalinar to damnations with ribbons on his ankles. Especially now that Odium is Taravangian, who Zeth hates. Zeth not only lacks the desire to serve Taravangian as a fused, but Zyle implies that Zeth lacks the ability because he is already a cognitive shadow of honor. Dalinar's damnation would force Zeth to confront his next ideal, an energy crisis, a fight with the Ghostbloods, and probably a battle somewhere. That sounds like a Sander Lanch to me. Aftershocks. Looking to the back five, whatever remains of Voran culture will be thoroughly shaken even if they win. The fact that Dalinar, their prophet, leader, papa, Schismatic heretic is residing in their hell is not going to be easy to bear. It's very rare for contemporary religions to admit that some of their leaders weren't great. Also, it's very rude for people outside that faith to point it out. Please do not inform any of your friends, neighbors, or relatives of their impending doom. While religions aren't fond of being told their leader is in hell, Gods and heroes pop in and out of their respective underworlds all the time. There's really too many myths to mention. Most importantly for this video, in the myth of Eros and Psyche, you know, the myth that Warbreaker draws inspiration from, Psyche has to go to the land of the dead to get Persephone's beauty in a box and take it to Aphrodite. The myths aren't clear. She may have succeeded and became a goddess, or Psyche may have failed. What this could mean for Dalinar is a whole subplot of theological debate on Roshar until Book 10, where he could return as a glorious hero god. A god? But I'm not going to speculate that far, for Dalinar anyways. This video is just me playing with some of the themes in this series and asking what is the worst possible outcome for the Duel of the Champions. What do you think? Let me know down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you would like to see more. Your patronage is greatly appreciated.